okay. So, <laughs> the finale dropped. Oh my goodness. Yep, the two-part finale has dropped, and since I'm a view-hungry man, I'll be turning that into a two-parter video talking about all of this. And so today we're talking about part one. But of course, before we go any further, just a big F in the chat for anybody that was hopeful the finale might turn out to be good. Like, <laughs> imagine watching this show for years on end and getting served up with this to finish off the main arc. Like, you just have to laugh, honestly. It's just so absurd. It plays out like bad fan fiction. How can you bungle such a popular concept so horribly and then deny that you've bungled it at all? Ugh, I can't even. I swear this finale is going to drive me insane with bad decisions. Just sitting there as it finished and I was there in shock. But yeah, really not much else to say in general terms. So, you know, I just don't know how it made it from script to screen. So let's jump into the episode. Okay, so we pick up the episode on the first day of the summer break. So the day after the coup against Chloe's martial law. The day after Marinette was told by Felix and Kagami through the medium of super cringy interpretive dance and fairy tale storytelling that Felix, Kagami and Adrian too were all senti monsters and that Gabe was the one that had the peacock miraculous and thus was likely the one that had the butterfly miraculous and thus is very obviously Hawk Moth slash Shadow Moth slash Monarch. And it's also the day after the students told Miss Bustier that she should run to be Mayor of Paris. So already, you know, the timeline's whack and nothing makes sense. Because once again, how did Miss Bustier manage to enter her name into the race for Mayor and become one of two primary candidates so quickly? Where's the rest of the Municipal Council? Where are the political parties? How did she get there? What's going on? How did she have her campaign sorted already with flyers and policies and all of that? I mean, the next day they've already organized a rally where she's gathering up support. Like what, what, what? Also, according to the news broadcaster, there are lots of tourists in Paris in the summer. <gasps> I know, stop the presses. Extra, extra, read all about it. One of the most famous historic and popular cities in the world is a tourist hotspot in summer. You, <laughs> what a dumbass. How is that interesting news? And look, then we have more news about Adrian and Kagami being in London doing modeling things because apparently that's something that people care about. And truly the most newsworthy part of that whole broadcast is that London's having good weather. We then cut over to the weird prison complex that Gabe and Madame Sarugi have made for their kids in London, which honestly, how do you actually do this to your own kid? Seriously, Gabe has turned into literally the worst parent ever. And that was difficult because we saw Andre challenge that title last episode. And so is Madame Sarugi. And I gotta say, I know we're just talking about this episode, but just in general, it is really just so unsatisfying how these two characters have literally no consequences later on. I'll briefly touch on it now, because, you know, part two is coming. I don't want to spoil everything. But he dies and he gets remembered as a hero. And she gets off scot-free. Like, seriously, what is this shit? Here, they're severely abusing their kids, locking them up in that sanitary prison room. All for their own good. And like, what's the intention here? For them to be forced to be together? How do you enforce that when they clearly don't want to be together? Are they going to use the rings to force them? Force them to get married? To have kids? Ugh. Nothing like forcing your kids to assault each other using mind control. And they made a statue for this man. Marinette made a statue for this man. Really? This is the ending you want to give to a man like this? Ugh. No thanks, Asterix. He's not a tragic hero. He's a piece of shit. No, thank you. And so, yeah, moving on, we now get to see Gabe's grand plan. He akumatizes himself into a villain who can produce nightmares. He clones himself and he flies around the world, spreading chaos and fear. And honestly, at this stage of the episode, I was still a little bit optimistic. The plan itself, as a villain plan, was decent. And it made sense for what they were trying to accomplish. So, nothing wrong just yet. But yes, let's keep going because it all falls apart very soon. Next up, we cut to a fever dream sequence of Marinette, clad in ladybug colored biker helmet and knightly armor, battling an akumatized dragon version of Gabe who has Adrian tied up on a beanstalk and she accidentally kills Gabe, Adrian cries and she wakes up. You know, it's a weird sequence, but necessary, I guess, to show the actual effect of the villain power. And then Marinette, instead of focusing on the fact that Felix and Kagami legitimately told her that Monarch is Gabe, decides that she needs to focus on her Adrian problems instead, which, what? The... Am I supposed to pretend that that whole cringeworthy scene that I was forced to sit through didn't happen? Oh, just sure, be an idiot, Marinette, sure. And not only that, not only does she not focus on this, but she decides she wants to go to Gabe's house to talk to Natalie. Yes, go to Monarch's house to speak to his sidekick. Oh, that seems like a reasonable and smart thing to do, doesn't it? But hey, let's chalk it up to her mind being influenced by the nightmare power. It's the only way to make this stupid ass plot make sense. 
I mean, let's be real, she should be kicking in the door of the mansion and whooping Gabe's ass before he can think. She should not be worrying about her boyfriend who is in London at this stage of the game. And we see Tom and Sabine, they've had their own nightmares, but they're pretty much irrelevant to the story, and I'm not going to bother delving into that right now. And then as she's leaving the bakery, Marinette runs into Alia, who's also freaking out, thinking that Monarch's going to find her and force her to tell him who Ladybug is. And honestly, this should have happened by now. It should have happened. It's so obvious that Alia would know a lot more than the average wielder would, because Ladybug was so insistent on having her be part of the hero team. Even after her identity was revealed and Gabe directly targeted her at her house, Ladybug in secret gave the fox back. And Gabe found this out at the end of last season. He's just such a smooth brain. No excuses anymore for this show. No excuses. It's just so stupid. Ah! So Marinette then decides that she's going to help out Alia once she's spoken to Natalie. There's no mention of Gabe. How can you... Ah! Imagine poor Felix. Poor Felix. He spent all that time putting together his bad performance only for Marinette to completely miss the point of everything. I mean, how hard is it to piece this together? Where the hell do you think he got the peacock from Marinette? How are you this dumb? I mean, Emily's dead and Felix's dad is dead. So clearly, they're not Monarch. It wouldn't be Emily because she lives in London. And so surely, surely, since they know that Monarch is a man because they've spoken to him and fought against him before, you'd think that Marinette would then realize, oh shit, it has to be Gabe. There's no one else it could be. But no, apparently Marinette's just dumb or at least clouded by the nightmares. But what about Tiki? Tiki, what are you doing? You don't have the nightmares. It would have been shown if you did. Are you an idiot of the highest degree? Tiki, what are you doing now? What is going on here? Can't she remind her that there's more important things to worry about than her boyfriend at this stage? Instead, she just goes mental and phases into the bag of baked goods to stuff her face. Tiki, you cringe mate. We then cut over to Cat Noir, who's having his own dream-induced mental breakdown. And look, this scene goes on for a little while, but it is very irrelevant. Long story short, Adrian's sad. He's scared he'll get akumatized, and so he gives up the ring to Plague and tells him to go and take it to Ladybug instead. Then he puts on the Alliance ring and uses the meditation app and falls asleep, and thus ends his relevance to the finale. Yes, yes, that's right. Miraculous. Tales of Ladybug and Cat Noir. Apparently not. It's just Tales of Ladybug. Imagine that. Like, there are more emotional stakes for Adrian to be part of this final chapter in the Monarch arc, and yet he stays locked up in prison. What is this? How do you spend years writing for a show and decide that this is how you want to wrap up one of the most important character dynamics? Gabe and Adrian's relationship is one of the cornerstones of the entire franchise, and they wrap it up like this and give all his story beats to Marinette to conclude for him. Why? Why would you do this? There's no way that every single person in the production line of this show thought this was a good idea, is there? How? 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 <sighs> anyway. Marinette then arrives at the mansion, she transforms into Ladybug to sneak inside, whilst we see Natalie have her own little nightmare of Gabe finally winning against the heroes and getting his wish. And so Natalie then begins to record a last message to Adrian, because she's really on death's door right now. But then she gets the notification for the nightmare antidote, and realizes that this is it. Gabe is about to unleash his master plan, so she decides to kill him with her crossbow. Honestly, this is based. This is a good plan. Kill this fool. Should have been done ages ago if you ask me. And I think she would have got away with it too because apparently the police in this world will just take your word for things. Like how Emily is known to have disappeared. Never died, but disappeared. And the authorities just don't seem to give a shit. So whacking Gabe and hiding his corpse in the basement with Emily feels like something she could get away with. And so off she goes to face Gabe, whilst Ladybug heads into her room to go through her stuff. And all the while, the people of the world seem to have been reduced to gibbering, drooling incompetence, all lacing around on their sofas and chairs, watching the virtual avatars of Adrian and Kagami. Like, yeah, it made the nightmares go away. But did it make their brains go away too? How did they manage to hypnotize the people so easily and make them so dumb? Like Marinette's parents, they're drooling over how Adragami's their favorite endgame ship. The perfect alliance. It's such a weird plot point that relies on literally every character in the show being an outright buffoon. We see you can resist it. Alia and the friends resist it. But not Marinette's parents, you legit. But yeah, we'll come back to that because it's more relevant later on in the episode. For now, we're back with Marinette sneaking into Natalie's room, where she finds Natalie's old explorer outfit and a photo of her with Adrian's parents, which for some reason shocks her. I don't know why though. Like, she worked for the family and she knew them quite well. How is this a revelation? Marinette, what are you thinking here? Surely Adrian at one point has spoken about how Natalie's always been around since he was a kid. No? 
Yikes, what do they talk about? Anyway, it's back to Plague, and we see him turn up at the houseboat to find all of Marinette's friends already addicted to the nightmare antidote. And so, he can't manage to get Ali's attention away to give her the ring. However, it's Milan of all the friends who manages to hold firm, even when Ivan, who previously had no alliance ring, succumbs to the temptation of soothing the nightmares. Aw, poor teddy bear. However, her resistance doesn't really last all that long because the nightmares and peer pressure eventually get her to succumb as well. And so now, with so many people around the world under the influence of the rings, our villains move on to the next phase of the plan. But not quite yet, because Gabe has to go and check Emily's life support system, which Natalie has briefly sabotaged. But she falls victim to the oldest trick in the book. One, she doesn't immediately ambush and kill him. Like, shoot him in the back of the head, what are you doing? And then two, she lets him speak and then she also lets him walk up to her. What's the point of having a ranged weapon if you don't stay at a range? So yeah, he takes her down. And who was shocked? I mean, how the hell could she ever buy his bullshit for a second? Do you really think I'm a monster? Do you really think I'd sacrifice someone else? Yes, all the evidence points to yes, Gabe. And so he carries her back upstairs, whilst Marinette, who seems to have contracted smooth brainitis by being in the aggressed mansion too long, sifts through Natalie's stuff. <gasps> a tablet stolen from Master Fu with all the miraculous book pages screenshotted. How would she have this? <gasps> her personal tablet with all the identities of all the superheroes and heaps of classified shit. Why would she have all of this? Meanwhile, we're all screaming at the TV. Because she works for Monarch, you dumbass. You were told all of this, literally all of this. She has the audacity to pretend like she wasn't. Ugh, that's what makes it worse. The fact that she's somehow dumb enough to have forgotten the previous episode. <gasps> It can't be. Multiple shocked gasps. Freaking out when Monarch detransforms in the room when he's taking Natalie to bed. Like, yes, no shit. Why is this a surprise? Even if she'd somehow forgotten, surely by this point, the moment that Monarch walks in, carrying Natalie, whilst in the aggressed mansion, would imply that it has to be Gabe. Unless it's somehow Adrian. I mean, what is going on here? Did she think Felix and Kagami were having a laugh? What is the explanation? Worst part is they don't actually explain it in the episode itself. So you just have to sit there thinking, what? Gabe then talks some shit at Natalie and says bygones are bygones and all that. He leaves and honestly, fair enough. She has very minimal right to be mad at him anyway because a lot of her predicament is her own fault. That's what you get for siding with a villain, dumbass. And all the while, Marinette's hiding. She's panicking because somehow now it's only just sinking in. <sighs> yeah, I gotta stop talking about that part because otherwise I'll just go insane. I'll drift off to insanity forever and never speak again. I'll just be trapped in my own brain. So yes, let's ignore that she should have known and move on with our lives. Marinette then talks to Natalie a little bit, and then, <laughs> did Natalie die? Kind of seemed like she died. Either way, she gave Marinette a bunch of info that Marinette should have already known before the scene moves on to one of the stupidest plot points of all. Despite knowing that Adrian and Kagami, on the Alliance rings, they're just virtual avatars, and everyone knows this. People all over the world are somehow convinced that they were kidnapped by the virtual avatars of Ladybug and Cat Noir. There are angry news reports. Everything. Hell. Only through Alia talking some sense into the pack of fools that call themselves the Resistance is Marinette's class even mostly able to resist. So yeah, this whole plot point just relies very heavily on the vast majority of people being too stupid to function as humans. Back at the villain HQ, using the protective charm and Gabe's crumbly, dusty hand, our villains are able to track the quantum signature, or whatever sci-fi bullshit that is, of our heroes, and this in turn means that when they transform, he'll be able to find them. At the same time, he sends out a message into the Alliance rings that allows those that accept to turn into mindless warriors intent on saving Adrian and Kagami by defeating Ladybug and Cat Noir. And dumbass Ivan joins up. What? What an idiot! Yes, there was a reason that he needed to stay away from technology, eh? He's just too stupid to use it. <laughs> Honestly, this would have to be the nail in the coffin for him and Milen to ever use technology ever again though, right? The one time he uses it, he gets possessed by a supervillain. Oh, Ivan, you idiot. Poor teddy bear. Anyway, the resistance teams up to try and take him down and remove his ring, whilst Alia talks to Plague and refuses to power up because of her nightmares, forcing him to go and find Marinette. And honestly, good. This was actually a good writing decision, because as much as Alia Noir would have been fun, could you imagine if the final battle of this arc of this five season journey was Marinette and Alia versus Gabe. The only thing worse than excluding Cat Noir from his own boss fight is replacing him with the tertiary hero. So at least it wasn't as bad as it could have been. My God, 
There's an alternate universe where that happened. Imagine. Back over to Ladybug and suddenly she gets sealed inside the mansion and all the lemmings all converge on her. As now the quantum signature is active and they know where she is. Plus they can all teleport and they have a bunch of good powers. And so the battle begins. And not gonna lie, this brief battle that she has against the minions where the camera follows her from Natalie's bedroom into the entrance hall and the kitchen fighting as she goes, that was hype. I have not liked a lot of the story, but you cannot deny that the action here was actually really well done. Massive Spider-Man vibes. Into the Spider-Verse inspired. It feels that way for sure. Marinette then hides in the kitchen cupboards and detransforms. And then we get our showdown between Monarch and Ladybug. And that was hype too. He drags her out. He realizes who she is. Oh, and if Cat Noir was there too, would have been the perfect chef's kiss moment. Especially if he arrives like Plague does after the reveals had already happened. So he doesn't know anything until they get dragged out of the kitchen cupboard. So you would have ended on this cliffhanger where Adrian finds out. Oh, wouldn't that have been insane? Oh, missed opportunities, I suppose. Oh, and Marinette unifies the ladybug and the cat. Did not rate the costume. And Bug Noir is a kind of cringy name. Sorry. And so yeah, that's that for this episode. Part two coming tomorrow. And so with all that being said, this is just my opinions and now I'd like to hear yours. What did you think of the first part of the finale? I will right, we'll just talk about part one on this video, I reckon. You like it? You hate it? I'm curious for your thoughts, so make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and let me know.